Moiske kreis nachts wel steen at a hotel in Bomut one spring met dark eyed Rosie Galutski and gave her a gold wedding ring. They lived in Cricklewood Gables and of business Moish had a good share. He gave Rosie diamonds and sables and Rosie gave Moishke an heir. Imagine the great joy and nachas when the doctor delivered to Rose that very first grandchild Grace Nachas with Moishke's hands, feet and nose. Moishke went down to his office with his face all shining with bliss and rang up the Reverend Lobos to arrange the date for the bris. Thirteen years later, young Yitzchok, for this was the young fellow's name, attained the great age of Bar Mitzvah, the time of the film and fame. He learned his mafta and parsha from a cousin who knew how to croon, and they all looked forward with pleasure to that Shabbos, the 14th of June. Relations from small towns and cities and uncles and aunts from Ukraine sent presents of wallets and stitches and war bonds and bottles of rain. Yitzchok rose early that morning in order his collar to fix and to admire himself in his talus that cost wholesale but fourteen and six. Rosie came down looking smashing, wore a hat with a little black whale and a dress in the real latest fashion from Solomon's once a year sale. The crowd in shul broke all records with parents, relations and friends. The women wore foxes and fur coats and the men morning shoots and striped pants. After the usual brokers, the husband's voice, mellow and sweet, summoned the Moishke Greisnachers and the congregants rose to their feet. Rosie sat up looking smiling as their son was mounting the stairs and Yitzchok with heart beating wildly started to offer the prayers. The shamas hang bang, quiet please you hollered. Everyone sat there like mice. Yitzchok breathed hard in and swallowed. No sound came, the boy lost his voice. Rosie upstairs felt like fainting. Moishka commenced to swoon off when that terrible silence was broken by a yiddle who gave a loud cough. That wahoo re-echoed like thunder. It made candlesticks shake, silver ring, and when all seemed lost, came a wonder. Yitzchok started to sing. From that moment he sang on like Tauber. His voice came forth clearly and plain, and when he came to Vayoma, everyone shouted, Amen. As Israel was saved by the Red Sea, from the Egyptians who all were bumped off, so Yitzchok will go down in history as the kid that was saved by a cop. It occurred on a Shabbos at 122, when the coins had sat down to dine. This Hamish group had just zooped lokshin soup, and Papa was pouring the wine. With the exception of Shmuel, they had all been to shul, for this always with Papa was law. But occasionally Shmuel was allowed to break the rule, cause he had to look after the store. On this very date, young Shmuelke was late, so the family being hungry began. When the soup plates was cleared, the kishke appeared, all done to a tan, crisp and brown. Now all Papa's life, he loved Rivke, his wife, for her cooking was second to none. Her blintzes was fine, and her kugel divine, but he loved best her kishke, well done. As Mama was lifting the top from the dish, Schmulke burst in through the door. His nose hit the tray. Papa shouted, Oy vey! And the kishke was flung to the floor. A terrible spell on the whole family fell, and the shiksa she started to reel. But as Shmuel made retreat, Papa rose to his feet and said, Pick it up, you shlemiel. Shmuel stood his ground, didn't utter a sound, but his ponim had gone very red. 
he said, you knock the kishka out of my head, you pick the tig up instead. Shmuel, Shmuel, pick up the kishka, his tata exclaimed with a roar. But Shmuel said, I feel I would be a shlebiel, so it stays where it is on the floor. A tall fellow with eyeglasses rose from the chair. It was Eli who was studying the law. He called himself Guy, wore an old college tie, and laughed, nicht ha ha, but ho ho. Shmuel, Shmuel, pick up the kishke, Eli exclaimed with some heat. But Shmuelke just said, Guy, Guy in dread, it stays where it is by my feet. The same thing occurred when Mama and Rosie both failed to make Shmuelke obey. But when the old Zayda rose from his chair, everyone's feet turned to clay. Grandfather Mose blew down his nose, and a trumpet call seemed to come out. He knew the Gemara was 93 Kanena horror, and the Talmud he drayed inside out. Shmuel, Shmuel, pick up the kishke, said his Zayda as quiet as can be. Shmuel. Shmuel, 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 come, my kid, just to please me. All right, Zayda, said Shmuel, for you I'll oblige. If you'll husk me, I'll do like I'm told. So Shmuel picked it up. Good lad, said Mama, sit down or the dinner will get cold.